So you save up a nice little chunk of spice and your eyes drift over to that tech row. Which one should you buy? Which ones are the most overpowered? Well, you came to the right place because I'm creating a Dune Tech tier list where I'll go over the relative power level of every tech in the game. The nice thing about this game is that most of the techs will have scenarios where they're great, which always makes evaluating the different tech options interesting. With that said, some are inherently better than others, especially for the spice you have to pay. Anyway, let's jump into it. So we're gonna start out at the bottom here. And by far the worst tech in the game, it's gotta be Spaceport. You're paying five spice to draw two cards instantly. And then for the rest of the game, you can put cards you acquire on top of your deck. This is by far the worst tech. I've seen it sit in the tech row the entire game. <laughs> Remember how I just said most of the techs have scenarios where they're interesting? Spaceport is usually not that interesting. There are some pros to this card. The card draw aspect can bail you out of a terrible draw in the end game if you have a lot of extra spice, sure. And the ability will end up giving you maybe one extra play of your cards during the game because instead of going to the discard pile, they just go on top of your deck so you can draw them next round. Fine. The major cons are that this is way too expensive for what it does. It lets you what? Gain access to your cards a little bit faster? Is getting to play a card you buy maybe one extra time per game really worth five spice? Given the high cost of this tech, you usually won't be able to get it until later anyway. And getting it later on obviously means less uses, but also later in the game, the Imperium row will usually be picked clean of all the really powerful cards. So in essence, you'll be able to use this tech to get more mediocre cards and put them on top of your deck, which will have a less relative impact on the game state. Additionally, if you don't get it until the end of the game, you're usually wanting to buy spice must flow anyway and you don't want those on top of your deck at all so usually you'll just be paying five spice to draw two cards and you have to use an action to go and get this tech so you're paying five spice and an action to draw two cards compare this to select a breeding which is two spice for two card draw and you can trash a card or research station where you're paying two water for three whole cards generally this tech is only going to be relevant in the super late game if you have a lot of extra spice you're desperate for card draw and you have a dead hand the other member of f tier has got to be sonic snoopers so Sonic Snoopers, you pay two spice to draw an entry card, and then later on in the game, you can trash that tech, put any number of your entry cards on the bottom of the entry deck, then draw that many entry cards. So it lets you cycle out your bad entry cards, basically. The pros are that this is pretty cheap and it can work well with Intrigue and Imperium Row cards that require text to function. But that also means you can't use this card's ability until you've taken advantage of those cards because to use it, you have to trash this. And if you get really unlucky with Intrigues, being able to cycle out a bunch of them at once can be a worthwhile use of this card, especially later in the game where you might be desperate to try and get some end game Intrigue points, this can be a nice Hail Mary. The major cons are that you're paying two spice for an entry card. That's just not great value. In general, the entry cards are pretty valuable in this expansion, so unless you're drawing a ton of them, you'll usually only want to cycle out one or two of them during the game. So for that reason, I don't think the two spice and the agent action to get this tech is really worth it most of the time, but it's pretty cheap, and if you have nothing else to do with your spice, then fine, go for it. Okay, so now we're moving up in the tech tier list. First member of D is going to be Disposal Facility. This is the deck building tech. When you buy it, it lets you trash one of your cards, and then every reveal turn where you have six or more persuasion, you can trash one of your cards in play. So usually you'll end up buying this for three spice, and you'll net about two to three more trashes throughout the game. Usually the deck building strats are going to work best when you get a super high tier card or two in your deck, like a Lady Jessica or a Quizats, and this will enable you to draw into those cards more frequently. And this can be especially powerful if you have any of the victory point generating cards, so you can keep drawing into those and getting victory points over and over again. The real cons to this card is trashing just isn't that great. Deck building strategies tend to be a little bit too slow to win games. And you can't even go into a combat heavy strategy with this because this tech requires six persuasion to activate. So it's gonna skew the player to wanting to create a more spice must flow, high persuasion oriented deck. This tech can work, but you have to be really disciplined in transitioning to buying victory points. If you just keep building up a great deck, you won't end up getting the victory points you need before the game's over by someone else. Overall, paying like three spice for around three total trash, it just isn't that great of a value, especially compared to some of the other cheaper techs. Also, this does require you to trash one of your cards in play. And if you have a good hand, you might not wanna trash any of them, which can also to limit the value of this card. Our next member of D tier is going to be Troop Transports and there'll be one spot above Disposal Facility. I think people are gonna be surprised to see this one so low. Troop Transports, you pay two spice, and whenever you recruit troops from the shipping track, you can recruit an additional troop, and you can deploy any of them to the conflict. This turns the shipping spaces into pseudo combat spaces, so now you can send those troops into battle whenever you collect, and still have an effect on the game state. This really improves your combat potential while still being able to utilize the insane resource efficiency of the shipping track. It also has great synergy with Invasion Ships and Trome Delegate because it'll allow you to force your way into that shipping track more and get more value out of this card. The cons of this card is that you really need to hit shipping a lot to make this worthwhile, which isn't always easy to do. People know how good the shipping track is and they'll be fighting you for it the entire game. On average, you're probably collecting from shipping on average like two to three times a game max. So best case scenario for this card, you're getting this effect every other round. Compare this to the training drones tech, which gives you an extra troop every single round. I just don't think it's valuable enough unless you can really monopolize the shipping track. Which brings us to our next somewhat shipping oriented card, Invasion Ships. Invasion Ships is a five spice card, which gives you four troops on by, and 
enables you to discard a card so that enemy agents don't block your agents during this turn. This actually isn't too bad of a card. It gives you a pretty big influx of troops for five spice and can have really great synergy with Romber and Ixian Engineer where you can send those troops directly into combat when you buy this tech because you can buy it while going to a combat space. And five spice for four troops isn't terrible value. The infiltrate effect can be good. Most of this time you're going to be using this to go to interstellar shipping, but you can also use it for some other high impact spaces later in the game like Highliner or a research station if those are being contested for. And sometimes discarding can be a useful synergy with some of the unload cards in the game that activate when you discard them. Some of the cons of this card, it's pretty expensive and it's situational. It's always going to be better when you have interstellar access to make optimal use of this infiltrate ability. And unfortunately, discarding a card can suck if you need to hit a certain persuasion threshold to buy a Spice Must Flow or another good card. Also, the troops are nice, but when you get them, they're usually going to be garrisoned and you need to figure out how to get them into combat. Usually that will involve taking two combat space actions so you can deploy two of the troops at a time. That means the troops you get from this, they're going to be heavily telegraphed for when you're able to actually put them into the battle. And you definitely won't be able to get them all in the same turn unless you use all three of your actions during a round to get all four of the troops into battle. But like I said, it is better when you can get them all in at once with Ixian Engineer, Romber, stuff like that. And now we're taking a bump up to C tier and we're going to start things out with Chomer Key. Chomer Key lets you pay four spice to draw two entry cards and in the end game, you win tiebreakers. So if you win another player and at 10 victory points, you win, guaranteed. The pros of this card, Four spice for two injury cards is a similar value as Sonic Snoopers with a much better effect tied on. Tiebreakers decide many games of Dune Imperium and can be especially relevant in a tournament setting where second place is also important for advancing. One of the big cons of this card is that it's just so boring. This has the same energy as buying insurance. It's not fun, it's not game changing, but you should probably do it if you want to be responsible. You also have to keep in mind that this is an end game card. This tech doesn't matter until much later in the game. And if you're buying this early on, you're giving up the opportunity cost of having four spice so you can have this card. You could be using that spice to go to Conspire to get High Council or Swordmaster. You could be going to Selective Breeding to buy better cards. There are a lot of other places where you can use this spice. And if you're using it early to get Chomer Key, you might be putting yourself in a position where tiebreakers don't matter anyway because you're too slow to get the victory point you need to get to 10. But I do think this is an overall solid tech and can win you games more often than not. And our next member of the C tier is going to be Memory Quarters. Memo Quarters lets you pay two spice to get one bump with the influence track, and in the end game, if you have three or more influence on all four influence tracks, you get an extra victory point. Some of the pros, this is pretty cheap. Two spice for one influence can be powerful. And if you can combo this with the shipping track so you end up getting two influence with one action, it's so much easier to steal alliances. Another big pro is that it can get you a victory point, which is always a powerful effect. And this can be especially good with leaders like Tessia or Duke Leto, who are great at climbing the influence tracks. Some of the cons of this card, this is usually just going to be two spice for one influence, which is kind of borderline value wise. If you think about it, you can also just gain that influence by going to that faction space and you also gain a benefit from doing that instead of having to pay two spice. Also, it's extremely difficult to get that end game point. It's going to cost you 12 total influence spread across all the tracks. And that's not including if you also want to get alliances along the way. It's just really hard to get that much influence to throw around. And you're usually better off just going for alliances and leaving the influence the two for the non-competitive ones. We also need to take a second to discuss the beast effect with some of these two cost techs. The beast starts the game with one spice. So one trip to tech negotiation lets him get two cost techs in round one without having to collect spice first. So a popular combination with this tech is going with the beast, going to fold space with your first action, and then tech negotiation with your second action so you can get a second bump with the guild and thus have round two shipping access. It's insanely strong. I'll discuss some other beast effects as well, but this is a pretty big one to keep in mind. Overall, it's another solid tech. It doesn't do anything game breaking. That's why it's in C, but it's still good. And now our next member of the C tier has got to be training drones. Training Drones lets you pay three spice so that for the rest of the game, you get one troop every round. This can be great value, especially if you get this early on. This can result in five to six troops throughout the entirety of the game. And that extra troop early on can sway combats. It basically turns your leader into a better version of the beast. Additionally, as long as you go to one combat space during every round, you can usually get this troop into combat when you buy this. Some of the cons, it's good, but it's just not insane. Sure, that extra troop early on can make a big difference, but late game when the combat values are getting up into the 20s, that extra troop just isn't that impactful. I'd say it's a very balanced, average tech that can let you take down some early combat victories. And now our last member of the C tier is going to be the beefed up version of training drones, Restricted Ordnance. Restricted Ordnance lets you pay four spice so that every reveal turn, if you have a high council seat, you get four extra daggers. It's a very similar concept to training drones. That's why they're going to end up in the same tier and right next to each other. But I think it's a little bit better. With this card, you're paying one extra spice. And instead of getting two extra combat power, you get four every round guaranteed. And this can be very annoying to deal with as an opponent because you can just throw in one unit and lock down easy second place rewards for most rounds. The big con is that it requires a high council seat. Most of the games you'll have it, so it's no big deal, but it does delay how early this will become an effective tech. And usually you're going to want to get Swordmaster first, especially if you're going towards a more combat oriented strategy. So there's a bit of anti synergy in this card and that it's going to want you to get high council first. But if you have high council, this card is a no brainer. It's so good. 
Overall, this is a really good tech. It just requires a bit more setup than the other ones, which can make it less impactful in certain situations. Okay, now we're gonna see our next bump in the tier list. We're moving up to B. And our first member of the B tier has gotta be Wind Traps. Wind Traps lets you pay two spice to gain a water, and then every time you win a conflict, you get an additional water. Water is the most scarce resource in Dune Imperium, and getting it in this game is so annoying. You usually have to go to still suits if you wanna have more of it. One spot split amongst four players, it can be contested. So being able to buy one plus water for two spice, I think will end up being a good value most of the time. Also, this card has great internal synergy, unlike Restricted Ordinance. Games where you focus heavily on spice and water tend to lead themselves to a more combat-oriented strategy. So you can go to spaces like Highliner and Conspire, and a lot of the techs, which also require spice, are combat-oriented. So if you're going with a combat-oriented strategy and you have wind traps, it lets you set up an insanely powerful spice economy going to the Great Flat or the Haga Basin and lets you reinvest in future battles. Two spice for what will usually be around two water is just a good value. Some cons, at the worst, this is just going to be two spice for one water, which can have a minimal impact on the game. You're usually going to want to try and spin this card into two to three water throughout the game. And another con is that it can be easy to get water overloaded sometimes, especially in games where a lot of the other players have excess water, either through combat or maybe it's Ariana Thorvald. If a lot of other players have water, there's going to be more competition for spice and the research station, which makes the relative value of water go down. So those are the big cons of this card. Otherwise, I think overall, this is a really good card and has the same beast effect where you can get it round one and really start spinning up his spice game. Our next member of the B tier is going to be Detonation Devices. Detonation Devices lets you pay three spice and whenever you win a conflict using a Dreadnought, you can return that Dreadnought to your supply to gain one victory point instead of taking control of a board space with it. This is a three spice tech that can net multiple victory points, so that is insane value. This can be especially strong with leaders that have a Dreadnought advantage like Prince Romber who gets one extra combat strength or Duke Leto who can acquire Dreadnoughts for one less Solari. Unfortunately though, three spice for the opportunity to gain a victory point makes it a little less valuable than it otherwise would be just because it's not guaranteed. Getting the points from this card is very telegraphed and opponents will work harder to deny you wins with Dreadnoughts to deny you the victory points you get from it. Also, each of these points will cost you a Dreadnought, which is three Solari and one worker action to go and get that Dreadnought. So there is another cost built into this. This tech is going to be very situation specific, but overall I think it's an above average card. Any tech that gets you a victory point is just going to be good. Our next member of the B tier is going to be Shuttle Fleet. Shuttle Fleet lets you pay six spice to get bumps with two of the factions, and at the start of every round, you get two Solari. Keeping in mind that every bump gets you halfway towards getting a victory point, you're effectively paying six spice to get one victory point, although it is spread out amongst two different tracks. And if you can get this tech pretty early, that extra Solari can fuel your Swordmaster, your High Council Seat, Mentats, it's just good. And it'll be especially strong with Solari oriented leaders who need more Solari to make full use of their abilities. Unfortunately, as for cons, this is an expensive card, so you'll usually be getting it in the mid to late game. And by that point, you might already have access to High Council Seat or Swordmaster, so you might not have a good use for all that excess Solari. Additionally, I said those two bumps can be effectively considered a victory point, but those bumps are going to be less valuable on certain board states, especially if a lot of the tracks have a lot of competition and you already have those two influence VPs. Overall, this is a very powerful tech and its value is oriented on how early you can get it, but Getting those bumps is insane, especially if you consider in the setting of the combat machinations that also gives you two bumps with two different influence tracks. I've seen people go to Highliner to try to win that combat all the time, which also requires a lot of spice. So this is a guaranteed version of winning the combat machinations that also gives you Solari on top. It just thinks that the Solari will usually end up having a minimal impact on the game because you end up getting this later in the game. Our last member of the B tier techs is going to be Flagship, the other victory point tech. Flagship is the most expensive tech tile in the game. It costs eight total spice, but on purchase, it gives you a victory point, and in the future, once per round, you can pay four Solari to get three troops. Straight up buying a victory point is always gonna be good in this game, and it's a nice way to burn excess spice at the end of the game if you're not doing anything valuable with it anyway. And of course, this card is gonna work great with that Imperium Row card that lets you use your Solari to buy techs, because this can end up being an eight Solari victory point. Awesome value. The ongoing troop effect can also help you take down multiple combat victories in the end game if you have the Solari to fuel it. Flagship is better than Shuttle Fleet because even though they still both give around one victory point, it knows it's an end game card. It gives a pure VP, which can't be contested, and it's giving you a lot of extra troops in the end game when there's a lot more combat power flying around. The big con of this card is that you have to be very rich in resources to take full advantage. You need to have eight spice and you need to have a bunch of Solari to take advantage of this troop effect. There's an argument to be made that if you have this many resources, you're either playing inefficiently or you're blowing out the game, which can make this more of a win more card. But I think in certain scenarios, this is the perfect card in the end game and has a lot of great end game synergy. The biggest downside is of course its cost. 
but even with the cost, it's a great tech. And now we're taking one more bump up this tier list to A tier. And our first member is going to be Hollow Projectors. Hollow Projectors cost three spice and every round it lets you discard one of your cards to draw a new card. This is a pretty inexpensive way to drastically improve the consistency of your deck. There are many situations both in the early game and in the late game where a dead draw can ruin everything for a round. This tech effectively costs three spice to draw an extra card every single round. And it has even higher utility if you manage to pick up some of the unload cards that benefit from being discarded. This tech is pretty much always a good buy. Of course, the big con of this card is going to be that you have to discard a card, which if you end up drawing a really powerful hand, you won't want to discard anything, which can limit the use of this tech. But overall, this card's pretty much always a good buy regardless of what strategy you're going for. It's not situational, and for the price, it's just a very powerful effect, which is why it lands itself in the A tier. Our next member of the A tier is going to be Artillery. Artillery only costs one spice, and every reveal turn it gives one additional dagger for every revealed card that provides one or more daggers this turn. Some of the pros for this card, it's just so cheap, it's actually free with tech negotiation, so anyone can get this during any round. And since this card can be gained so early on, it allows for a strategy to be built around it from the get-go. And even if it shows up later, people can still have some daggers in their reveal cards, which can drastically improve the combat potential of their deck during the endgame. Despite this tech being so cheap, it can have a huge impact on every phase of the game, and if you build around it, it can help you blow out late game combats. Some of the cons, it does require a deck building commitment to get full value. And usually if you're getting cards with dagger, that means they have less persuasion, which can make it really hard to buy spice must flow points in the end game. And of course, combats can be an inconsistent way to get victory points, especially if the victory point combats don't come up or if there are other people going heavy for combat strategies, you might just not be able to win them even with this tech. But overall, this card is so good because of how cheap it is. It completely changes the way you play the game and it's just fun. Our last member of the A tier is going to be Mimic Film. And with that said, I haven't noticed until this video, and I'm pretty sure everyone else has it too, it's not Mimic Film. It's Mimic Film. I'll probably still say Mimic Film because Mimic Film is much harder to say, but that's just me. This tech costs two spice and every reveal turn you get one persuasion. Pretty straightforward. You might be wondering why did this make it into A tier? Some of the pros for this card, first of all, it's cheap, so you can get it very early. And getting an extra persuasion every single reveal turn can dramatically accelerate your deck quality by allowing you to buy better cards earlier on. It seems like a small difference, but sometimes that one persuasion can make the difference between adding an extremely powerful card to your deck or just buying an Arrakis Liaison. This tech even has a lot of value in the late game because it enables you to buy Spice Must Flows even easier. With High Council Seat, you get an extra three persuasion every single reveal. It's not hard to get up to nine persuasion if you have three extra every round. This tech is a beast. Speaking of beasts, this can also be gained round one by the beast and enables him to play a very interesting persuasion style build, even though he's a more combat oriented leader. There are no big cons to this card. It's just not as insane as the two techs we have coming up. But overall, this tech, like Hollow Projectors, is just always good, but it's even cheaper than Hollow Projectors. And now we move on to the big daddy techs, the S tiers. And our first member of S tier is going to be Holtzman Engine. Holtzman Engine costs six spice and lets you draw an extra card every single round. And in the end game, it's worth one victory point if you have at least two spice must flows in your deck. This card is insane. It gives you an extra card every single round. It has a similar effect as Mimic Film in that it allows you to improve your deck quality acceleration and buy spice must flows in the late game. But additionally, it gives you more options for your worker actions because you have more cards to work with. And this card has great internal synergy. Getting that extra card to get extra persuasion during reveal rounds makes it easier to buy spice must flow cards. And getting up to two spice must flow cards by the end game, it's not a very hard thing to do. So this is almost always going to be one extra victory point. Six spice for an extra card every round and a victory point is just insane value. And this is almost always going to be a good tech to buy, especially if you're going towards a deck building spice must flow strategy. The big con to this card is that it is more expensive, so it won't have as big an effect on the early game. But even with that, it's just so good. And that brings us to our last member of S tier, the best tech card in the game, which I'm sure no one is surprised about. Spy Satellites. This card is absolutely busted. I cannot believe it only costs four spice. First of all, it lets you trash it so you can pay three spice to gain one victory point, which honestly isn't used very much, if ever. The real meat and potatoes of this card is the endgame effect, where it's worth one victory point for each faction where you have one or less influence. This card lets you pay four spice for four victory points. That is insane. I cannot stress how insane that is. It's the ultimate value. Also, it allows the player to ignore the faction tracks so they can go super deep into their spice water economy and just go to city spaces and win combats. So it's good in the early game because it lets you ignore the faction tracks and if it shows up later, it can bail out the players who didn't invest enough in faction access. Even if you buy it later where you're only getting two victory points out of it, four spice for two victory points is still a great deal. The main cons of this card, the trash ability will almost never be used like I said, it's just not good. Paying seven spice for one victory point just 
just isn't as good. It's also important to keep in mind that these are end game points. So these aren't taken into account until after someone reaches 10 points and puts the game into end game. So if you want to get full value out of this card, you won't want to get to two influence with the tracks, which can make it very difficult for you to end the game. So this gives control of ending the game to the other players who can delay it until they have more victory points than you. So if you don't have some hidden victory points, it can be very hard for you to shut the game out. But even with that caveat, this card is such good value that it's still the best. There are very few scenarios where you don't want this card. And even if you already have the points with every faction, you still might want to buy it just to deny it from someone else getting it. It's that good. So that's my full ranking of the cards. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel. It helps me out a lot. And if you have a difference of opinion, comment. I'd be happy to discuss some of these. Thanks for watching.